Matthew chapter 7, 13 and 11, the roadmap. Jesus is speaking and he said, enter ye into the straight gate. He said, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. He's speaking now, Jesus. And many there be which go in there. Can you imagine? Wide is the way, the gate, and broad is the way that reason of the advantage of altitude. They are able to see even parts that, hum even parts that humans cannot see. And yet Job is saying there is a path which in spite of the altitude, that advantage that the fowl, the bird of the air has, and the vulture's eye, that they are not able to see it. Verse 8. It says the lion's whelps have not trodden there. You know, they call the lion the king of the jungle. And I've watched a number of documentaries on lions. They are very bold. They do not fear, especially when they are moving as a pride. They move with gallancy as though they own the forest. And sad is any creature that stands their way, especially if it's alone. They would tear it into pieces. Worst off is the hyena. Let it be that any hyena meanders the path of a pride. For no reason they will kill it. They've been arch enemies from time immemorial. Are we together now? And yet he's saying as bold, as courageous, as audacious as the lion is, there are certain parts that with its intelligence, intuition, and courage, it's not been able to get there. Even the fierce lion has not passed by it. These are parts in the spirit that only the Holy Ghost can take a man through. Remember, the eagle and the lion are two creatures that Jesus, God himself, likens himself. He uses the similitude of those creatures. The lion of the tribe of Judah and then the eagle. And yet the Bible says in as much as he's used those, those uh, similitudes, it is amazing that there are certain dimensions that they have not crossed. I'm praying for you already. In the name of Jesus Christ, these parts that only few have found in destiny, and with it they have commanded enviable results it is your turn to finally see it in the name of jesus christ a very popular scripture here ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15 the wisdom of the preacher he says the labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city there is a way to go into the city the city can mean anything the way of destiny, the way of glory, the way of grace, how to come out of a life of shame, misery, and reproach into a life of color and beauty, a life of glory by any definition. And he's saying that there is a labor of the fool. He is hardworking, but not a scripture here. Jeremiah 6, 16, the Bible says, to stand in the way and to see and to ask for the old path, wherein is the good one is that success Victory and greatness is our heritage in Christ. Success, victory, and greatness is our heritage in Christ. If you believe that while writing, shout amen. amen. Let me hear now that amen again. Amen. Success, victory, and greatness is our heritage in Christ. Save Johnny if you do not believe what I just said. Are we together? That success, victory, and greatness is our heritage in Christ. Among the many benefits of redemption is an opportunity while serving the purposes of God and living for Jesus to taste of true success, to taste of victorious living, and to be able to attain a position of commendable greatness. Genesis chapter 12, please. We'll read verse 2 and 3. The blessing that was proposed to Abraham, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. It says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So God proposed a blessing. He proposed a program for Abraham that I desire to bless the entire earth and you have found favor with me to be the one through whom that blessing will find expression. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. Paul was teaching us that if we be Christ, he says, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That when God was making that promise, cutting that covenant with Abraham, it was not just for his sake and his seed there was not Isaac. By natural descent, he became a beneficiary of that covenant 
that promise, but spiritually speaking, he was speaking about Jesus. And that now in Christ and through Christ, every believer, are we together, has been made a partaker of this privilege, this promise, this covenant. God did not enter the covenant with us, but we are beneficiaries of that covenant by reason of being in Christ and through Abraham. Are we together now? This is very important. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Psalm 71 and verse 21. A scripture that is very personal to me. It came from the mouth of the Lord to my destiny. And it's a scripture that I continually remind God of and a scripture that has been ever before me. Join me in receiving it tonight. It says, Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on, any, on every side. Say amen. amen. It is a dangerous thing for your greatness to increase and you do not find comfort on every side. Because I hope you know that with greatness, what surrounds you are enemies. And if God does not give you rest round about, your greatness will become a cost to your life. So it says, Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Reminding you again that success victory and greatness is your heritage in Christ. Now let me pause for a moment and discuss this. Um, when we discuss matters of consecration, matters of surrender, matters of holiness and devotion unto the Lord, the intent is to bring us to a point where we prioritize Jesus Christ. Are we together? Above the things that this world can offer. Above jobs, above whatever it is. And it's a very accurate theology to teach believers to ascend in their passion and their drive for God beyond material things. If the scope of your seeking God is, the end point of your seeking God is just to acquire things, then you have been misled. Are we together? You will get things, you will get all kinds of blessings, but that for any serious believer who is mentored properly, there are weightier and higher and more serious indices that measure success in the spirit. The greatest of them being your passion, your press, your drive for God. The depth and the extent of your devotion towards God and spiritual things. Here's why I brought this, is, this issue. Sometimes in a bid to help people stay consecrated, in a bid to help people stay in the reality and the consciousness of holiness and total devotion to God, especially for we preachers, we make the mistake of trivializing the fact that the human spirit was designed to find fulfillment ultimately through your relationship with Christ, but that there must be consolations to your Christian experience if life must make sense to you. Are we together now? So sometimes in a bid to help people to not love the things of this world, to not love material things, we produce a lazy and an irresponsible people. People who love Jesus but having failed families. People who love Jesus but not accenting the kind of influence that gives the church a voice in society. The side effect is that we present a lopsided view of God. It is the reason why unbelievers today have the credence to mock the church. And they make it look like all we do is just pray, fall down fast, and we are useless to ourselves and to society. And based on the definition we have given them, there's, there's some element of truth in what they are saying. So when believers are being taught, when you bring the subject of holiness, righteousness, consecration, living a devoted life, pressing towards perfection in Christ, that must be a priority. But in addition to that, in addition to that, you must broaden the understanding of believers to see that they are in this earth and their lives must be useful and that there is a level of frustration they will experience even though they are in Christ. It's just how loving Jesus you are. If you do, cannot pay the school fees of your children, if you cannot move to, you know, make strategic progress in your life, especially if you accent any position of leadership, you will find out that you are perpetually getting frustrated. And I can submit to you, honestly, that this is what is plaguing many believers now. They are unable to reconcile their passion, their consecration, that they have lived a life void of bribery, void of corruption, a life that is truly dedicated and consecrated unto God. The Bible says to seek first his kingdom and, and all other things, you see. And that scripture has not been explained properly. And unfortunately, there are many people right now whose it's like their passion for God is becoming a curse to their lives because they are not able to make progress in any other aspect of life. 
Their wives are asking them questions they cannot answer. Their children are asking them questions they cannot answer. Their companies and corporations are asking them questions they cannot answer. Their finances are asking them questions they cannot answer. And at the end of it, the danger of this kind of incomplete theology like we are experiencing now is that there is a generation of young people who are rising they are more audacious they have laws and policies that can defend their convictions they are asking all the generations before them i am not interested in this logic this your spiritual logic does not add up some of them will say i watch my missionary father love the lord and yet he was in debt till he died like the sons of the prophet i watched my father he would not take bribe yet we never had the opportunity to do this and that some of them would tell you i got into prostitution even though i'm a pastor's daughter simply because of this kind of frustrated life we had morning devotion every morning morning and night devotion before we would sleep and i saw my father quarrel with my mother they never were able to live in peace you see it is very dangerous when the whole counsel of God is not communicated to God's people. I've been an advocate of meting out the whole counsel of God because as powerful as the various dimensions of God are, they become poisonous and even dangerous when believers only cherry pick one dimension and build their entire theology around it. For a while, it may not seem to be destructive until God grants you grace to advance, then you begin to see the cancer that is producing. Hallelujah. So this is another addition. That in addition to your loving Jesus, living a consecrated life, following hard after him, loving him beyond things, you must have this at the back of your mind, that success, victory, and greatness is your heritage in Christ. Please look up. Being successful does not take you to hell. Living a victorious Christian life does not take you to hell. Are we together? Desiring greatness and attaining the same in your lifetime does not take you to hell. In fact, there is a dimension of God's glory you cannot capture and you cannot reveal if you are not successful, if you are not victorious, and if you are not great. You believe that? Say amen. amen. You don't need to be an old man to see that when your life does not capture success, victory, and greatness, eventually your Christian experience will be lopsided, you will be frustrated, and all those who believe in you will eventually be frustrated. Let me tell you what is happening right now. Many of our younger people have believed some of these lopsided things, and there is a generation that is growing very angry, very angry, because some of them, if they had an opportunity to hear the whole counsel of God, um, look, let me tell you the truth. When you are taught God properly, it doesn't make sense to reject him. Are we together now? When you really understand God and you are taught God from the lens of balance, accuracy, you will love him with all your heart because then you will see his plan for your life. The picture becomes whole. You will love him by, by choice above every other God and above every other practice. But something happens to you when the picture of God given to you is from the lens of fanatism or from an incomplete dimension, you will embrace it sincerely, usually as a young man, but as you grow, as you get married, as you get into leadership, as many responsibilities come, there are many people who are swallowing the software of imbalance, swallowing the software of lop lopsided, the, the pills like a tablet of lopsided spirituality. The reason is because the things that they have not learned, there is somebody in their life covering it for them so they have not seen the consequence of not knowing those things eventually daddy goes to be with the Lord mommy goes to the be with the Lord the senior brother goes to be with the Lord and they are exposed to a vicious reality of something they have ignored for years some of them get to learn that lesson when they get into family life they carry their childishness and immaturity and find out that is tearing their homes into pieces and now, on learning it becomes harder. It's like a man of 40 years going to nursery class with, with a short knicker and you will be great as much as the earth defines greatness. But because God is not a factor there and he's not your greatest priority, you would have brought to your life the things that will end up killing you. So after years of piecing together human laws that can bring success to you, you find out that you begin to die by the same tools you labor to bring to your life. I can tell you there is an element of success, victory, and greatness 
there is an element of it that um, cannot bring you. It is only God being introduced in that equation that makes it valuable and profitable to you. Are we together? You get the balance now? But have it at the back of your mind. I studied my Bible. I made a determination to love God and to serve him all the days of my life. But when I found in scripture that success and victory and greatness is my heritage in Christ, I burned it into my spirit and into my consciousness. And there is no theology that will preach me otherwise. I believe that it is the will of God for me to live a victorious Christian life. I believe that it is the will of God for me, someone learning to live a successful life. I believe that it is the will of God for me to attain at the highest level of greatness that my life can command to the degree to which it will reveal Christ. This is what I believe. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Number two, a reminder that God is glorified when we are successful. Ah, I like this. God is glorified when we bear fruit. God is glorified. Psalm, Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3. It calls every believer the planting of the Lord. The planting of the Lord. That they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Every believer is a planting of the Lord. Every believer. You have to believe this. If you are a believer, know that you are a planting of the Lord. That means God is a sower. Everybody say God is a sower. It's not just humans that are sowers. God is also a sower and his seeds are men. His seeds are men. Are we together? His soil represents the various regions of the earth. God is a sower. He sows men. He expects the men to grow like trees and to become fruitful. And the harvest that he gets is how he's glorified. Are we together now? He gets the harvest of the fruitfulness of the saints. It is not just in your destiny to be great. It is not just in your destiny to be successful. It's not just in your destiny to be victorious. You must also know that God is glorified when Joshua Selman is victorious. God is glorified when Koinonia is great. God is glorified. He is. Truly he is. Jesus caused the fig tree to show us and teach us a lesson that he is very, very unapologetic about fruitfulness. Matthew chapter, John chapter 15 and verse 8. The Bible says, Matthew 15 and verse 8. Herein is my father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So shall you be my disciples. When you bear much fruit, when you bear much fruit, he wants us to bear much fruit, to produce results. God is glorified. Do you know the meaning of that? Listen, any result you get in your life that does not glorify God is a useless result. Any lifting, any prosperity, are we together now? This is the difference between the world's way of seeking power, the world's way of seeking fame, increase, and so on and so forth. Listen, the reason why that happens to them that way is because there is nothing that drives them. Their world is governed by self. I remember years ago when they were teaching us evangelism, we used a little pamphlet called Four Spiritual Laws. How many of you ever saw that pamphlet? A green pamphlet. And you will see that there are all kinds of diagrams. The first one has the person sitting on the chair of his heart. Then later, the person is pushed away and the, the cross is there as a sign of Christ sitting there. Now, for the unbeliever, his whole world is about him. His pursuit for success, for him. His pursuit of greatness, for him. Usually, it is to prove a point. To prove to everyone who thought they were failures. But when you come into Christ, the angle with which you approach the subject of victory, success, and greatness is very different. Everything becomes for his name's sake. The reason why you want to prosper, for his name's sake. The reason why you want to do well, for his name's sake. Once that adjustment is made, your pursuit becomes godly. Your pursuit only becomes destructive. If God cannot get glory out of what you are doing and I have taught you here with endless sermons endless series that your life your pursuit for success victory greatness and anything at all that men desire you must have it at the back of your mind that everything I'm seeking in this life is not just for my personal comfort 
but that God be glorified. Shout it from your spirit through your voice. Say, be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. Through my One more time. Say, be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. Meaning be glorified through my results. Be glorified as you lift me. Be glorified as you anoint me the more. Be glorified as koinonia expands. Be glorified as I, can, as I take my children to better schools where they are taught great values. And help them to become great people. Be glorified. As I move from a tenant to a landlord. Be glorified. As I get to a point where I am so blessed. I am now a blessing. I sleep in peace. Not worrying about tea and bread. Be glorified. Someone say it again. Say be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. Amen. Say it again. Be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. Amen. Every time I'm preparing for the miracle service. Usually the theme of my prayer is this. Lord visit your people. And then when I get to my own turn. I say Lord be glorified. Be glorified again. Your servant is going to stand before your people coming with various situations, various conditions. It is not within my power as a man to help them, but my trust is in you. And when I begin to say be glorified, I just sense waves and waves of the anointing because God knows my heart is sincere before him. That everything I'm about doing as I stand upon this stage is to glorify him. The success that does not glorify God is useless success. The promotion that cannot glorify God is useless promotion. Now, let me digress for a minute. And what does it mean for God to be glorified? I will tell you. God is only glorified to the degree to which Jesus is revealed through any growth, through any result. So that we are not vague in our discussion. Many people say be glorified, but there is no definition to what they are saying. I'm deconstructing that expression for you so that you are not left at a loss. Every time you are saying God be glorified, what you mean is through the result that come by engaging this through my growth let jesus be revealed i like it koinonia captures it so beautifully in fact in my opinion is the most beautiful expression of glory that i know jesus revealed jesus glorified jesus revealed so the bargain in the spirit is how is god's interest protected defended and advanced that is the bargain. It is the question you must answer if you want to do business with God. Lord, I'm trusting you to make me a billionaire. Fine and good. Here is the bargain again. How will the purposes of God be advanced through the millions? How will the purposes of God find expression? Let me tell you the truth. It is a bargain that if you cannot answer and you cannot step in to forget about doing business with God. Are we together? Lord, I'm trusting you to give me a great church. I'm trusting you to give me a global ministry. And God says, all things are yours. But here's the question. By the time I bring thousands and tens of thousands, by the time I multiply influence, I multiply bread, I multiply your voice, how will Jesus be revealed through it? Oh, many souls will come to Jesus. I will teach your word with integrity and truth. Now, the bargain for glorifying him is there. I'm reminded of what the Lord told me years ago that if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you meaning if you will live your life glorifying me there is nothing I will not give you be lifted high be lifted high oh Lord be lifted high for you are holy Righteous and worthy, oh Lord, believe. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, a big secret about this ministry by His mercy, the reason why we are on the frequency of ever increasing glory is because there is no room for the flesh to be glorified. From opening prayer until we share the grace from sound of revival to every school of ministry every activity in this ministry is directly tailored at revealing jesus i will gladly decrease gladly gladly decrease and let jesus be glorified my greatest satisfaction is seeing people know him my greatest satisfaction is seeing people encounter him are we together that if you come and you are healed if you forget about Joshua Selman and you remember Jesus, it was an excellent bargain. But if you remember Joshua Selman and even idolize Joshua Selman 
and then you forget about the one who died for you and you focus about the one who cannot even die for you you made a very bad bargain with destiny hallelujah i will tell you this in passing the reason why many people do not see the hand of god in their lives is because although they are obeying the correct principles that lead to success their hearts are very corrupt and they are just waiting for results to arrive and then the world will see another version of them and many times god withholds that result as an act of his love so that it does not tear you and add you to the memorial of those who have become a disappointment to the program of god if there is any way i know to move the heart of god is to hide behind the cross and say lord be glorified in whatever you bring to my life if you add one dollar to my life let it be for your glory if you add one more drop of the anointing upon my head let it be for your glory koinonia are you learning this now we're discussing the roadmap i'm showing you why things don't work well for people there are some of you this is your sermon as you came here tonight god has been pounding it for years drop your pride and drop your appetite to be known your appetite to be seen your appetite to take the stage if you can relinquish that then you step into a realm that only few have gotten to a realm where they are fearfully exalted by the finger of god because they have died to self are we together god is glorified when we bear fruits i am the planting of the lord it's a revelation that i have god planted me in abuja god planted me in nigeria i only came through my family i didn't come from my family i passed through my family look at me i know you call yourself yoruba you call yourself Igbo and hausa geographically speaking you are right but spiritually speaking you are wrong you came from above through your family don't forget your family was a channel not the origin that means whatever limitation you met there you can conquer it by the consciousness of where you came from that he that cometh from above is above all so the limitations that trap Yoruba people, the limitations that trap Igbo people, the limitations that trap South Southerners, Middle Beltans, Northerners, Americans, Europeans, it may be true, but the consciousness of your origin, are we together? That since God will be glorified in my life, it doesn't matter what comes with my natural descent. I cancel it by the revelation of where I'm coming from. He that cometh from above is above all. Hallelujah. Is someone learning be glorified i have seen how god is glorified in and through my life i have seen how god is glorified in and through this ministry my greatest desire for you my dear people is not that you watch a man who is glorifying god with his life but that you become an active participant of birthing and bringing glory like an incense rising from your life rising from your days every day you can tell god you've given me the gift of life i want you to sit back and watch glory rise from me to you Glory coming through evangelism. Glory coming by the correct use of your mind to better the lives of people. Glory coming by drawing people to Jesus. This is powerful. Glory coming by helping the poor and the needy. By next week, by the message of God. I'm so happy that the medical team, uh, you know, are doing the things that they are doing, helping people. Do you know it's something I am delighted in my heart. You have to be an unbeliever to be angry. That next week, somebody's life will be changed, diagnosis, all kinds of things, you know. You know, humorously, we discuss with our medical people that there are people who wait for Sunday to go to the hospital because they may not have the money to go to, you know, a hospital. So they wait patiently and they know that everything that happens at the medical stand is free. So they wait on Sunday. As soon as they arrive, they march straight to the medical stand. Diagnose me and treat me. This is the house of God. <laughs> and we're happy to do that. And we won't stop. No, we won't. We won't. It's a job out there, but it's a ministry here. It's a ministry. For as long as God grants us grace, we will continue to do everything with the strength that he has given to see him glorified. Someone again say, be glorified. Be glorified. Through my life. 
for every one person who eats because your finances supported them that is you revealing the glory of God for every downcast person who your counsel gave them life and hope just know that you are glorifying the Lord let me tell you this one of the ways we grow in the spirit is by using what he's given don't desire more when you've not exhausted what he's given the anointing he gave is for headache exhaust the headache first there are many heads that are in pain focus on healing the heads and before you know it from headache it moves to something else don't be praying for grace to heal cancer when he gave you the grace for headache and you ignored it because it's too small i mean what testimony i was once having headache and now it's god people say my friend go and look for something serious no no are we together one way i know to grow in the anointing is effective use of the current grace god has given you use it faithfully and then you continue to grow but the message here is that every one of us please pay attention god is glorified when i bear fruit listen i have i've indoctrinated myself not just that i'm a blessing but that god is glorified through my life when i come to church i come happy smiling in my spirit why because god is going to get glory from my teaching god is going to get glory from my preaching as i'm preaching and the power of god rests upon someone i'm not just conscious of an anointed man showing his anointing no maybe someone's prayer request has just been answered the answer the age-long answer when i sit back and i hear the testimony sometimes I, I i just my heart i wish i could cry you see that now and I'm thinking the wonder working power of God. Look the testimonies that were shared. Cancer, whatever it is, just gone like that. How much can you buy those miracles? That is God being glorified for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, your life is the next to bring great glory to God. I say to a believer, your life is the next to bring great glory to God. You know how you know you are glorifying the Lord? There will be a witness on earth. Someone will say, thank you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, this so 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 and so. Thank you, my dear brother. Thank you, my dear sister. The advice you gave me last time has led me to love the Lord more. The counsel you gave me has taken me away from the way of wicked men. Now I'm pursuing purpose. I'm pursuing destiny. Are we together? The last time you took me to the prayer department meeting, now my prayer life has come back strong. And do you know, since the day I started praying, God started wiping the tears off my family. Curses and yokes started living. Now God is being glorified. Never live your life for 24 hours hours without a direct imprint Jesus not being revealed from that life it is terrible Jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher Jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher let our King be lifted up, O I love